Hello there, welcome back here on Prime Morning. It's a Monday morning, yes, we're in the third hour. We'll be wrapping up very soon. But of course, we've got so much more to talk about here on the show. Don't forget that coming up is, uh, you know, our divorce series. And uh, we'll let you know where we've got into. Before that, you also got to know about what's been trending around us. So if your birthday wishes, we've sent them to you. The news flashed this morning. Well, uh, we're still looking for, you know, a lot of money in the system right now. Thanks, I. Uh, getting bad, but uh, yeah, the money's a lot of places where we have to all look sharp and be getting some. Ha. A bit later, we'll have uh, Human Mercy also join us here in the studio. We've got that conversation also coming up here on the show as well, so you might as well want to watch for that. Now, let's say a big thank you to Nutri Snacks. They make it possible for us to have all the conversations that we have here on the morning show. So, without Nutri Snacks, uh, we don't know what will be happening. You know what I mean? So, it's a reason you need to make sure you are uh, also buying and ensuring. Now, it's the best on the market. Trust me on that one. It's very nutritious and delicious as well. If you want any biscuit to mix in your, uh, you know, breakfast, you're looking at, uh, I, I do Gary soakings and then I put it inside, you know. Uh, it's, it's really nice. If you like, just try this morning. You know, if you're having breakfast and you want to, or maybe lunch, you know, you want to do Gary soakings, put a bit of milk, you know, and all of those things, cool minis, and then, you know, add nutri snacks to it. Let it, put it in the gario and let it melt with that, you know, stare it. And it's, you enjoy, trust me on that one. It brings some flavor, the air, like, you, you will never regret it, all right? So try to give me feedback. I love feedbacks. So <laughs> when you try it, you give me the feedback and you can get it at the supermarkets anywhere you go. Just say you're looking for nutri snacks, they'll give it to you. Even in traffic, um, over the weekend, I bought a few in traffic, you know, and so, yeah, try as much as possible and get it. Awesome stuff happening here on the show. So, for those of you out there who've been following our divorce series, you know that a lot has been said on the show. Now, the feedback has been phenomenal. We enjoy it, we like it, and we love the fact that we're making an impact, uh, you know, on, on, on some of these very serious issues that have come up uh, with regards to uh, divorce. And so, if you're watching this morning, we've gotten to a point where we need to look at the distribution of the special properties now last week on thursday we had psychologists coming through you know helping us understand better how we can put our mental health together when we're in situations like that we had a very special person also come through and share a story with us here on the show so today we want to continue from there but of course we'd like to say a big thank you to our lawyer who has been with us throughout the period you know when we started he's he's been there he's done that he's seen almost every issue that have come here on this very show and it's help us understand better what the divorce process is all about and you know moving forward what people can do to ensure that they don't stay in abusive relationship marriages or anything that would you know uh, disturb their peace of mind and mental health and all of that um let, let's let's say a big thank you to him uh Sena, AMG. you good i am doing well good so, to see you it appears you had a an amazing weekend. With I did, your, actually. With your Gary and... Uh, yeah. It's I, more no. like a Dada B kind of situation. You know what here. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I, I, awesome. I enjoy the fact that, you know, it, it, it brings a certain side of me anytime that I'm back on that special treat. You know, I call it a special treat. So they should try it, you know, and give me, <laughs> give me feedback on that. But I'm excited right. you're no, here. No, no, and uh, thanks so much for making time for sure. us this morning as well. Sure. I, I know a lot has been said, you know, but first of all, before we even get into today's conversation, um, let's do a bit of, you know, your personal assessment over the period, what we have done over here as a lawyer, sitting back and looking at some of these issues. What, what does it make for you? For me, I feel excited that this platform has been created for people to have this information free of charge because I've had a number of people who call you and then want to find out several aspects of the divorce process and, and I believe that this is an opportunity for the entire nation and indeed um, across the continent and all those who are watching online anywhere else in the world to have that information and then also an opportunity to call in and then ask their questions and then have them you know answered. Indeed a lot of people have, have received phone calls and people mm. have been very appreciative of some of the information that has been shared. In fact, some of them just call and, 
and they only want to show appreciation. They, are not, they don't have any questions mm -hmm. and all of that because the information that we have discussed and shared on this platform over yeah. the last few weeks has been that impactful in their lives. And I believe that um, as we wrap up the show in the, this and the next um, episode, I believe that when we're done, anybody who is in this situation, and, and, and I believe that this particular program is for a targeted few. Yeah. So if you're not in, in this situation, you may not find benefit in it. But those who are in it and are going through you know, the life or death kind of threat situation, mm. they found it very useful. And then this last bit of it will kind of like wrap it up and then give them a perspective of where they want to go to. Because mm. I mean, really and truly people want to leave, mm. but they don't know what do I get? Yeah. Do I just walk away and then, and then walk away yeah. empty handed? You know, so they should pay attention throughout this today's um, episode and then send in their questions. And I believe that by the time we're done today, or if we're not able to complete it today and then the next session, they will have answers to all the boggling, mind boggling questions they have. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Lawyer, thanks so much. So uh, you can send your messages uh, and uh, your experiences as well. If you've gotten to that period where it's, you know, a spousal distribution of property or whatever it is that you've gotten to, you can, you know, send your questions to lawyer. I'm sure uh, he would have, uh, you know, them answered for you. So at least you also get to know what to do if that stage is where you are. I mean, we've been through all the various stages, reasons why you want to even divorce, um, what you have to look out for before getting the divorce, you know, some of the implications that comes with that, the financial difficulties that comes with that and all of that. We've taken a look at so many of these things. And so I'm sure by now you have, you know, a fair idea if you're deciding that you want to leave that marriage where, you know, you are going and what it will take for you to embark on that journey. Like lawyer keeps saying over here, he's very excited to see people get married. He's very excited to see people enjoy their marriage. We are equally very excited to see that people have marriages that are doing very well. But that notwithstanding, if there's a marriage that you are in and you feel your life is threatened in a certain way, I mean, you got to leave. And I would, I'll give the same advice to my kid sister, my big sister, even myself. You understand? Because you do not want to be in a situation where you feel that you're camped in a certain place where you know your life is in danger and you still want to stay because of one reason or the other. There are processes, yes, but it gets to that point. And if it's there and it's at that point where you feel that your life is threatened in a certain way or form, you need to make that decision. We still support marriages out there we're happy for all those who have got in marriage. Enjoy them. Um, lawyer, let's, let's begin with today's <coughs> conversation. So yeah. we, we want to look at how, you know, we now split the properties. It has gotten to the point where we're in court, the, the judges are saying this, the lawyers are saying this, this person is also bringing this issue. At what point do we now decide that, okay, now understanding is reached. And so who gets to benefit what and who gets to benefit what? You make it sound so exciting. Yeah, yeah. That's where exactly you get to know what <laughs> you, you're know, going to take you home. People are excited when they get to this stage of the process. Okay. But before I, I break it down, I'd like to let the viewers and those who are watching understand that when it comes to spousal properties, we are going to be looking at it from three different um, categories. Okay. We may end up adding one or two depending on, on the time. Okay. So we'll look at properties that were acquired before the marriage. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, you had your father or your family gave you some gifts, some things that you inherited before you got married. How were the court treated during the divorce process? If somebody gives you a gift, say $1 million, mm -hmm. I mean, how would you treat it? Bef which was given before the marriage. The marriage. How would you treat it? And then we would also look at properties that are acquired during the marriage. So properties that are acquired during the marriage will be split into the ones that are self-acquired and then the ones that are jointly acquired. Okay. And then we'll look at the last category of people who are staying together. They have kids together, but they are not married. And some have even acquired property together hmm. with the hopes and belief that, oh, we're, we're going to get, get married, done, yeah. so let's... 
let's just uh, we might as well just Joint start accounts, yeah, and all of putting that. things together. When properties are acquired in all these categories, how will the court deal with them? So if we will delve into the very first aspect, yeah. which is properties acquired before marriage, the law is that any property you acquire before marriage does not form part of um, spousal property. So okay. that when you're in court for a divorce proceedings as, a, as the man or the woman, the properties that you brought into the marriage, mm. the court will not touch them in the splitting process. Let's say a house or a car. Yes. So you meet um, a lady, you have four houses. Oh, you can use me as an example. I'm, yeah, I'm I mean, okay you're, you're a rich so chap. I meet so I the, so, the beautiful lady. So KMJ <laughs> meets, say, <laughs> Asantua or, uh -huh. or someone, and then... Um, hey, Asantua for the man right there. <laughs> 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 but I mean, you know, so you meet and then you come in, you know, with your, your G-Wagons yeah. and then your cars and, you know, fat... Your business doing very well, mm -hmm. and then you get married, and you acquire some properties as well when you were married together. Now, at the point where there is that split, there's, there's that split going to be done in court. The factors that the court will take into consideration, they'll ask themselves that, who, at what point was these properties, property A, B, C, D, acquired? And at what point was C, D, E, F acquired? If you are able to prove and establish to the court that these properties were acquired before the marriage was contracted, the court will shift that property aside and then now focus the rest of the rules on the ones that were acquired during the marriage. Okay, the, the, before you move on on that, what, what's the proof about? What do you necessarily have to bring for the court to understand that, okay, indeed, these were things you bought before getting into the marriage? Is it a certificate or...? Okay, so sometimes even your spouse will attest ah. that, oh, as for this one. <laughs> and, and, I mean... They'll be kind enough yeah, Ghanaians are very to say, honest. oh, this one, dear, yeah, I know he brought it to the marriage. Yes, in, some, in, in situations like that, I don't know whether it's because people are people don't want to lie in court. And but in fact, are, when you lie in court, we're talking about. yeah, when you lie in like court, it amounts comfortable. If you, like. if you lie in court, it amounts to perjury, and you you, may, you can go to jail for it. Okay. And so that, you know, threat of potentially mm. going to jail makes people tell the truth. Especially, okay. I don't know outside the court, but in the court setting, <laughs> to a large extent, you know, people speak the truth. So. That's one of the ways. Yeah. Another way is that you, you say you bought a house before you got married. So you have papers, documentation, you have site plan. It has only you have, your name on it. Yes. That has your name on it. And so you can show that, okay, look at the date on it and then look at the time we got married. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't, you bought, you have a car, you have an account. So there, there, there are ways to establish that all oh, these ones, you know, if you don't have documentations, you can have somebody else who was present at the time of the acquisition of the property to testify, to testify or the person you bought it from who can also put in place, uh, who can sign an affidavit and then or make a statutory declaration that yes, indeed, you, you bought this from this. They may have not transferred title to you yet, but you acquire them at this stage. Mm. They, cannot stay, they can state whether it was before or after marriage, but they can tell the courts the dates that you purchased that, that item. Mm. So once they do that, then it allows the courts to exempt that, those properties, properties from, from the distribution. Okay, so if it's not in my name and it's in my mother's name or my sibling, one of my siblings, or even a, a daughter I've had before, even, then what happens? It, it, it reminds me of the Hakimi... <laughs> Hakimi thing. Exactly. Put yeah. everything in his mother's name. It, it, must, it, it might work in his country, but it won't work here in Ghana. Okay. You can hide your, your, your properties, but there is what we call in law tracing. Mm. So if we can establish that you have control or dominion over that property, you, you, you are only using that person as a proxy and that you pretty much financed it, you you own it, but the person is just holding it in trust for you, mm. then we can bring it in. And, and in the in divorce processes, people try to be smart that way. The properties are acquired during marriage, they try to put it in other people's name, but yeah. that is why we have the laws here in Ghana. And then if 
you know, counsel for the other side can make the various applications and then the tracing can be done. And if we can establish that, yes, that property, though it's not expressly in your name, belongs to you, and that a person is holding it in trust for you, then we can go after that property. Okay. Again, mm. gifts are also things that do not form part of the spousal property. So it doesn't matter what stage, whether the gift was even given before, during, or after the marriage. Once it's a gift. Mm. A gift of car, Whether a car, cash, house, anything. But that, be, that ultimately becomes yours. Yes, so it becomes yours solely. Okay. Unless the gift was given to both of you. Okay. So the, the idea is that we want to make sure that whatever you acquire together, you get equal shares mm. or it is distributed amongst the two of you. Mm. And so if you have a gift, somebody gives you something, you know, and you have that gift as your sole independent property, the court will not disturb that whole process. Mm. But you got it in the marriage. Yes. What comes into the marriage is supposed to belong to the two of you because you've become one. Yes, so that, that argument has been advanced in court in a number of decided cases. And the court has been, has been expressed and has interpreted the Constitution, um, I believe Article 17 mm -hmm. or so, that says that everybody has the right to acquire property individually. In the marriage? Yes, in the marriage. Okay. So when you look at some cases like Finn, uh, Mr. Finn and Mrs. Finn, when they appeared before the court, that was a line of argument that was advanced in court that, yes, I have the rights enshrined in the 1992 constitution that says that I can acquire properties by myself. So it, that right does not disappear simply because I've gotten married. Okay. That Actually, right still exists. I wonder how many people, you know, know about this. Well, so that is why we have some of these programs yeah. to educate the public to I'll let them know, know this is, you know, for the first time. Yes, to let them know that, that they, they can acquire properties individually. There's a process you go through okay. to acquire property individually. Anyway, mm. so then the last aspect, we'll discuss it when we get there. Mm. Now we'll focus on properties acquired during marriage. To be very honest with you, the general position of the law is that your wife is entitled to half of your properties. That is basic. That's the general position. Yeah. As a general position, and this is is um, is a constitutionally entrenched, not entrenched in the legal term of entrenched, but the, in the loose meaning of the word, is entrenched in the provision in, in the constitution. If you look at, I believe, um, Article Twenty Two Three A, it says that a spouse is entitled to reasonable provision of the of each other during the process of di divorce. Okay, and then, so it's for both ways, right? Yes, it goes both ways. Okay. So uh, most of the time, I'm, I'm saying wives because most of the time you will, in court, the men don't usually go after the women's properties. Mm. So <laughs> it, it's, it's been they, seen. They, they comfortably come after ours. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, so what has been seen in court is that most of the times the petitioners are the women okay and they're asking for a portion of the properties that were acquired um, by the man but i've been in court and seen vice versa and then the court ordered that some of the properties that were acquired by the woman mm. during the marriage should be given to the man okay you know and and that principle applies both ways to the man and to the woman and so yes the woman is entitled to half of your properties mm. however that principle is entrenched in the legal principle called equality is equity so when we look at when we get to the point where the equities do not allow for it doesn't it doesn't make sense or it's not equitable to have 50 50 then the court will use its discretion to say that you know what when we look at this whole situation you the woman should get 70 percent mm -hmm. and then the man should get 30 percent of the properties the, properties the total properties or vice versa okay. so yes as much as 
the, the spouses are entitled to half of the, of the properties. Where the equities do not allow it, then the partners, the, the court will decide using its own discretion to say that based on the evidences provided in court, the court will come to that conclusion and say, okay, this property was acquired during the pendency of the marriage. This property will be distributed in, in these percentages. Now, how the court comes to that conclusion of what percentages is, it, it uses mm. is very largely dependent on the principle as it was espoused in the AJ, Mr. AJ versus Mrs. AJ's case that they took mm. to court. And then it says that you must contribute towards okay. the acquisition of the properties. But you see, the line of judicial authorities proud to um, AJ and AJ talking of um, uh, Mensa and Mensa, uh, Lamte or Date Lamte, and, yeah. and, and then the, the, the wife, yeah. and then all those cases that have gone to court, is to the effect that a party or a, a party to a divorce proceedings when it comes to spousal distribution of spousal property must prove their contribution. Okay. So you don't go to court and just simply say that, oh, I'm the wife or I'm the husband, so I'm entitled to half of his properties. And that's what happened in the AJ and AJ case. And the court did not agree to that, I'm the wife and I'm entitled to 50% of the property mm. argument. And so the wife got nothing. So, so in must. that proof, you would have to pr pr provide some documents. And, and the good thing about um, proving in, in matrimonial cases is that the ordinary incidents of commerce do not apply. So the, the, the wife or the husband doesn't have to go and then provide receipts yeah. that, oh, I contributed towards this, this building, this is how much. It's much better. In fact, it's, it's great if you can provide those receipts. So it makes the, the percentages much easier for the court to say that, okay, looking at how much you have contributed mm. in terms of cash, then you deserve, this, you deserve this. But in most cases, that's not what happens. And so you can be able to demonstrate to the court that yes, I was there, I was carrying sand mm. to the construction I site. The sites. I was even there providing food for the workers. I was there once or twice a week supervising to ensure that work was ongoing. I was cooking for him at home. Hmm. I gave him peace of mind. So if <laughs> Asantua doesn't give you peace of mind at home, then you should you know, know that. that. Yeah, but, but and, and you, and you all can of get that. pictures, selfies and all that if you have them to prove this. Yes, right? yes. These are all pieces of information or evidences that you can put together to establish that, yes, you have had kids for him. You have, you know, warm his bed in the night and you have... You can use all of that. Yes, all of that are evidence to prove contribution. So proof of contribution doesn't have to be... Those are my, your marital duties. You're, you're not supposed to be using that against... You're not using it against. For, you're using it you to establish... Bed, uh -huh. It's your responsibility as my wife yes. to do it so. Yes. As much as it's my responsibility to also do so. Yes, so it is so also your you responsibility to ensure that if your bed has been warmed and you've had all your tension gone and then you've had peace of mind and you have with that peace of mind you've been able to take care of you know business imagine taking care of kids mm. how tough that job is so your spouse does that takes care of the kids make mm. sure that they are okay make sure that you come back home to a clean house and all of that and you because of that all that that has been done you now don't have to worry about all of this. You can have all that peace of mind and then you can go to that work alone. and then that alone is contribution. Wow. That alone I, I is contribution. I think cases where men have to use the issue of warming a woman's bed to also say, okay, I've done A, B, C, D for this woman in, yes, in bed. Yes, so it goes both I ways. Need, it's both ways Yes, it goes well. both okay. ways. So the man can also use that. So wow. there are situations where the, the women are the breadwinners. There are a lot of homes, mm. to be very honest with you, here in Ghana at the moment where the, w the wife earns far more than the husband. And they've gotten to the point like the Selena Williams situation yeah. where the, the husband is the stay-at-home dad and then the husband takes care of the kid. 
Because if you put the husband's salaries and all of that together, it's like one tenth of what the, 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 the yes. So they they both agree that okay, you know what, I won't close early. So you go take the kids to school. When you close early, pick them up, bring them home, take care of them, and then all of that. And because of that, the woman gets the peace of mind to be her the CEO and then all of that and acquires, makes a lot of money, acquires mm. all the properties. And then when there's the split, you cannot say that, oh, I acquired this one. And so I will not be, it, it won't count. It won't count. The, the, the no. number of properties. So there has been contribution. Yeah. Once contribution can be proved, that, that is the most important thing. And, and this information it's, it's so important, and I want to say something that's, that has to do with these properties. And um, as of 2020, I believe, when the, the New Land Act was passed, there's a provision that says that you can't even dispose of property that is acquired during marriage without your spouse's consent. Mm. You, can, you can't do that. There have been many cases like that. Men just sell off the property without even telling the wife. Yes, so when the wife finds out and the wife wants to, be, wants to make a big deal out of it, you can get um, an order from the court to stop that sale. And again, you're, you cannot use a spousal property as collateral for loan in the bank <laughs> without consent of the other party. There's mm. been a number of cases where they've done that and now it's time to levy execution on the properties and then the spouses the other spouse comes in to say that hey i'm a joint owner of this property and so i should not be um, you cannot execute levy execution on this property that is for both of us it's not for him alone mm. and so he alone cannot do that as much as i have my uh, personal reservations to that line of argument that is the law and so in distributing spousal properties we look, the court looks at all of these information and come to that conclusion that property A should go to this person and property B should go to that person. Mm -hmm. If you just join us here on the show, we're still here on our divorce series. And this morning, lawyer Sena Hotel Esquire is here with us from Parkwood and Mosaic. And uh, they're located at East Legon. So that's where you can find them. He already put his number here on the show. So those of you out there who has his number already, I'm sure um, you're getting some help. But, you know, um, make sure that you're calling him at the right time. Okay? Yeah, so that he can help every other person that will be calling him. But we're, we're speaking about how to distribute uh, properties in the issue of divorce. And uh, he's spoken about a lot of them. So if you just join us here, you can send your messages on our social media platforms and also on our WhatsApp line, uh, which is very active. And so we can also read what you think or whatever you're going through. If you need support, help, you know, once you read it, uh, you send it to us. Uh, he's gonna, we're going to read for him to uh, answer some of the questions that you'll be sending to us this morning here on the show. Um, so at, at this stage, we're, we're getting to where, which point are we getting to right now? We now know what, how the properties are supposed to be shared, who benefit what, who takes, even some that are not your own personal things that you've brought into the marriage, how to go about it, how the law goes about it. Yeah. Now, let, let's look at when do we now say that, okay, We've, we've distributed the properties. Now we know what is supposed to go to A, what is supposed to go to B. There were three things that you mentioned. So when you finish that, then we'll get into uh, okay. that part as well. All right. So the, the point that we say that properties have been distributed is the point where the court has made a pronouncement and he's given an order that property A, so we are... Um, distributing these properties, two houses, one car in favor of the man, mm -hmm. one house or two houses, um, three cars in favor of the, of, the, of the woman. And so at that point is where you can say that property has now been distributed equally or equitably. Mm. And once the properties has been equally or equitably distributed, then the individual parties can take steps to transfer ownerships into their individual names. And okay. so that, that's, that's where, you know, that's, that aspect of property settlement or distribution comes to play. Mm. We'll look at the retrieval of those properties, how the partners are supposed to get them. 
Um, what comes with that? Because you mentioned that the, 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 the court now orders. Yes. So how, the court has made the order. Now how, if the person is not bringing the item or whatever it is, we'll look at how to go about it. But let's look at this. In a situation where a judge feels that, okay, the, the, the lawyer for both parties said, I want A, B, C, D to go to this person. My, my, maybe the woman's lawyer says that I want the car, I want the house. The man says, okay, we'll give it to you. Now you go to court and then the judge who is sitting on the case now look at, look at the situation again and says that, ah, I think you deserve, the woman deserves more than she's given. Can they go back again and say, can the judge go back again and say that, okay, I would rather give you more than you're requesting. So they have to amend the entire process. Okay. So generally, the court will not give you what you haven't asked for. Okay. Generally. However, where it is in the interest of justice, the courts have the power to make any other orders that will advance the interest of justice. So, for example, the court in the distribution of the, the properties gets to the point where they feel like, okay, there are children involved and you have, you're saying you're not taking anything and then all of that. They can, as, as much as, you know, advise and encourage you to do something. But the ultimate decision is yours. If you're not interested in it, you're not interested in it. So they can't force anything down your throat. Mm. Yes, the court has <clears throat> discretion that it, it, it exercises. However, the court does not impose things on people. The court is guided by rules. The, there are rules of court, there are laws, there are um, procedures mm. that the court has to follow. And so it cannot make any determinations outside the rules of court unless it is done in the interest of justice invoking the inherent jurisdiction of the court. Okay. So th that's, that's essentially what, mm. what happens. Mm. I, I was asking because five years ago, a similar situation actually happened. So there was a female judge that was sitting on a case like that. And she had to leave for a male judge to continue. Now, whatever they were requesting, the male judge came, listened to the entire situation again and said, no, with what he's hearing, the lady deserves more. And so I had to tell them that they should go back and amend everything again and add more properties to it for the lady. Yes. So you see, there are times that people want to play smart during the, the divorce processes mm. and then they hide assets and hide properties and things like that. And so... For all you know, that was brought to the attention of the judge. Okay. And so the judge ordered that they should go and then amend the documents to include the, the new information that has been brought to the, his attention. Mm. And you see, when things come to court, sometimes what we hear outside is just a fraction of you know, the, okay, situation what, the situation of really what exactly like. it is. And so until you have the whole facts until you have the privilege of getting to know exactly what's happening in court, you may end up passing comments that are prejudicial to the determination of the matter. And, and, and I believe that, you know, as, as an officer of the court, um, I am mandated by the rules of court and all the other laws in this country not to prejudice the decision of the court. And so without knowing so much of the details of that fact, I'm, I'm unable to speak so much to it. But ultimately, in distribution of properties, the court has the power to make pronouncements on the distribution of the properties. And then it does so by looking at the evidences that have been presented. You must prove your case. Mm. You, you don't just bring a matter to court and then expect that the matter will be ruled in your favor. Mm. You must prove, especially as we're talking about the distribution of assets, you must prove your contribution. And we're saying that, you know, contribution need not be pecuniary. It doesn't necessarily have to be financial contribution. Your other forms of contribution that helped or aided in the acquisition of those properties, you can bring them. And then again, you can also tell the court that, okay, as for this property, I acquired it independently. And in your, you must prove mm. or show to the court that you acquired it independently. And then that's, those are the things that the court will look at. 
and then use to make a decision as to you getting this percentage or you getting that percentage. In any case, if you're not happy with the distribution percentages, you can always go to appeal. Oh. You can always, so you, you feel the court was unfair to you in the distribution of the property and they gave more. From both to, sides. Yes. Both parties can go, and, can go and appeal. And then you would have an appellate court judge who will sit on the matter, review all the, the, the entire docket. The record of appeal will be looked at and all, every information that was filed. And then they would also do an analysis to see if they will come to the same conclusion as the trial court judge. If they do, then your appeal will not be successful. But if they come to the conclusion that no, we believe that with these pieces of evidence on record, the trial judge should have considered evidence A, B, C, D in coming to its conclusion. And so we will either accept this aspect of the trial judge's rulings and then uh, vary or set aside the other aspect of it and, 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 and so on and so forth. Mm. One key thing when it comes to property distribution in court is that people try to be smart. And one of the things that have come up in the, the most recent case um, in the Supreme Court mm. on distribution of spousal property, which is a J and a J, is that properties that are a subject of loans mm. are not considered spousal property. Okay. So that if your wife or your husband has acquired that property you know, by taking a mortgage or a loan or something, and they are still paying and they haven't finished as at the time of the divorce proceedings, those properties do not form part of spousal property that you can share. Okay. It belongs to that person after they have paid. Because the idea is that you don't know whether they'll even be able to finish paying. paying or not. Yeah. And if they distribute it with you and you take your share and then they are not able to and the bank forecloses and they have to pay something, are you going to share in that debt as well. Mm -hmm. And so let's leave that aspect of it and then have um, the main thing distributed. And, and it's, it's easy for people to see this as a strategy to use to um, hide assets. But if, if the court can find out or if it can be demonstrated in the court that you are using some of these strategies or tricks as a way to evade, you evade know, the orders of the court. Out, yeah. So if it was done way before the whole process starts, that's fine. But as soon as um, a divorce proceedings begins and then somebody tips you off and then you just go to the bank and says, Charlie, you know what, all my five houses, they give me a loan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if you, we can establish that those were done with the intent to outsmart or um, evade or pretty much deceive the court, mm. then all those orders can be, re all those things can be reversed. Mm. Does the number of kids you have, you know, determine how the properties are supposed to be shared? No. Especially when they're giving custody or it's been ruled that custody should go to the woman? No. So property distribution is mainly about um, contribution. So the properties were acquired by both of you during the pendency of the marriage. Mm. And that property is to be distributed. So all we are doing is, how much did you bring? How much did you also bring? Let's split it okay. and then everybody take so it. So it doesn't matter if you no, have it doesn't seven matter. kids, 10 yes. kids. So that's why there's an aspect of the divorce proceedings that is called a maintenance and then custody and all of that. So at the maintenance stage, all those aspects, the, the court will consider, okay, you have all these properties and you have all these accounts. So that means you can afford X amount of money as maintenance. Okay. You know, you can afford that as maintenance. So the court will factor all of that in, in determining who gets um, the, how much somebody pays or how much if you're trying to say, okay, it's too much or it's too expensive and all of that. The, the court will factor all of that in in coming to a conclusion or a decision on the matter. So that, that's how that aspect plays out. Okay. All right, let's get some messages. This one says, uh, I'd like to ask, in, case where, in the case where you met the man and he was building a house but not completed and you couldn't contribute to it to after marriage because he has asked you to stop work so you, do, uh, so you had no money to contribute, what is your stake in it? 
So what he's saying that if the man, if the man, let, let's take that, that one. So the man starts the project, you get married and then you, you're supposed to contribute. But the man says that you should stay at home. So it means you're not working to gain money to also support financially. So in that case, where is your stand? I'm thinking maybe warming the bed will help <laughs> have a better stand. <laughs> but but you, you realize that the property was acquired and it was everything a, it was before. a building that was was in process. Yes. It's not completed so your yet. Stake, your stake in that, you know, there are a lot of factors the court will use to come to a conclusion. But one of them is that you contributed towards the finishing or the completion of that property. Okay. So not that, financially because you have no money. Yes. You're not working, so you have no like money. Like I've said, the contribution in law when it comes to marital issues in various ways. It doesn't it doesn't only mean money. Okay. And so if you have contributed, you know, in him getting all that he needs to be able to, you know, put up or complete that aspect of the house, then in my opinion, you have a stake in that pass or that um, part of the completion okay but the house itself and, and in law you know the 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 land includes a house so mm -hmm. if you have a house on a land we call it a land so all that you're not part of it you're just a part of the contribution towards making it habitable Okay. Uh, this one says, hi, what happens to properties acquired before marriage? Uh, thank you from Edmond in Kumase. Okay, Edmond, properties acquired before marriage are not a subject of um, distribution. Now, let me add this before we, we read the other questions. When you have a property that is acquired before marriage, and it so happens that you have all your properties were acquired before marriage, <laughs> you know. So when you got married, you guys didn't make any other properties you apart know, from the one you made. People can be really smart. I don't know how people get into the marriage with all kind of strategies and things. So people go like, okay, you know, I want to acquire all my properties before I get married so that when there's a problem, yeah. I don't split anything with that. The court has the power to even order that your property that you acquired before marriage should be some Added of it should it. be given uh, to to your spouse it will not classify those properties as spousal properties but under um, article 22 and then under the authorities of Boafo and Boafo and all those line of cases the court will have the power if you look at the courts act amongst others it has the power to make those orders mm. in the interest of the the children and all of that mm. that's where that have become a part of the you know, the whole family, family setup. Family so setup. that will probably qualify as sympathy. <laughs> well, you can call it sympathy, <laughs> but I mean, she gets away with something. You know, <laughs> I, I married customarily and along the line lost my job, but took up the house from uh, washing, <laughs> uh, taking care of the kids, all the entire house chores. Uh, she acquired a piece of land that provided money and we started building with uh, all my uh, physical efforts. She's now threatening divorce and says she would never accept me in the house when she's moving in. What should I do? Some of these cases come up a lot of times. Yes, yes. And, and this is a typical example of what we discussed. Yeah. It happens both ways. Yeah. You know, what we're used to is the woman yeah. being... Asking the man to give me that. Okay. Exactly. But these are very common. And the law doesn't say a wife or a husband. It says a spouse. And so both of you are in the definition of the spouse. And so if you have, you know, taking care of the home, taking care of the kids, you have provided all the necessary peace of mind and all of that, and then you've contributed as the right way, you have contributed and you can demonstrate it in court that you have contributed towards, you know, your other spouse, mm. acquiring that property, building it up, you know, with your combined efforts, mm. then you have a stake in it. And so she cannot say that, you know, I'm leaving and it's my house. I bought it alone. 
no, you can't do that. Because mm. he said that he was even taking care of the kids. You know, his physical effort was also used in building the place and all that. Uh, I can imagine that. Now, this one says, good morning. I'm really enjoying the program. Keep the good work up. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, my husband sold our land without my consent. And the one uh, who bought it met me and told me, how do I defend myself at the court if I am to prove it at the court? Wow. That's from uh, Cynthia in Akosombo. Well, Cynthia, um, the law is clear that a spousal property cannot be sold without the consent of the other spouse. And so if you have evidence that that property is a spousal property or is a jointly acquired property, then you can go to court and then prove to the court that this is a jointly acquired property. And so that property, that sale or purported sale should be set aside mm. because you as a co-owner or a joint owner of that property did not give your consent for that, that whole uh, acquisition or sale mm. of that property. So yes. All right. Okay, so uh, th th those are our messages for this morning. Unfortunately, we'll be wrapping up. But uh, this one says, please, I am Richard from Kumase. What about if there is no property but debt? <laughs> <laughs> when the court asks woman to pay some of the debt. Th that's quite an interesting one. That's an one. interesting <laughs> one. These are some of the ones we laugh over and then let it pass. You know, so. Yes. Oh, boy. But th th there could be that situation. E yes, there could be. A debt in a divorce. There could be. But you see, it's not enough to just write that there is death. How was the death, the, the death incurred, okay. you know, procured? Mm. Who um, procured it? Who were the beneficiaries of that death? Okay. And there, there's so much questions to be asked before you come to that conclusion. Was there an understanding of both of us before we even yeah, so did went we for the agree loan? that, okay, let's go for a loan or something together? And then I did, you know, for both of us. And then we used it, and now there's a debt, and we're trying to divorce, you know. Mm. So oh, a lot of questions need to be asked before we can come to a conclusion on that matter. Okay. This one says, good morning. Please, my marriage was dissolved this year, January. But after the divorce, my husband took the land and building document away. But the judge did not say anything about the property acquisition. Please, how do I make my claim? I was the one who asked for the divorce. And the so man took the The, the question again is... You see, you can, when you file a petition, you need to put together your reliefs. People put reliefs and then they only ask um, for the marriage to be dissolved. They don't ask for anything else. Okay. So the question is, did you ask for something in your petition? So is it, these are some of the reasons why sometimes we encourage that you get a lawyer to, to assist you through this process. Mm -hmm. Because yes, as much as you can attempt to do some of them by yourself in court, you may end up missing out on some important things and the process will be complete. Yeah. And now you're finding yourself that I, I thought I was supposed to get some, something else out of this and then I didn't. You understand? So we need to understand what the petition looked like. Was there something in there for distribution of properties that the judge overlooked? And so if the, the judge overlooked, then you can go to appeal or you can draw the attention of the judge if the case is still pending. And then that aspect will be looked at. You understand? Okay. So That's why you need a professional to guide you, a lawyer to guide you, go, uh, do some of these things. Now, this one says, good morning, guys. My name is S. Nam from Ho. Uh, my mom died two years ago. Uh, she was married to... Uh, this man who virtually seized all properties, including house, uh, fridge, etc. Uh, they didn't have any child during their marriage. Uh, both came into the marriage with kids. Uh, the man came with five and my mom three. They both put their resources together to build. However, when my mom died, uh, the man claimed the house and everything and then threw us out of the house. Now we are somehow homeless. Uh, please, the lawyer, to advise me. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, if those properties were acquired during the time that her mother and then the stepfather that were That was exactly together, what happened. The mom actually bought the land during uh, the, the marriage. During the marriage. And so, 
was the land or that property bought as a self-acquired? Did he buy it by himself mm. or they bought it together and did they contribute together towards the acquisition of that property? And if they did, then her mother or late mother is entitled to a portion of that property. Mm. That portion, what percentage of it is, is going to be determined by the court based on the arguments they will make in court. But whatever portion it is that belongs to her mother, you know, once she's late, they can, once they, they are successful in, in that, they can get um, a letters of administration if mm. she doesn't have a will, you know, to administer that portion amongst, you know, the siblings okay. and, you know, the family and all right, so um, it looks like there's always a way out one way or the other. I mean, it would, it, would, it would take a lawyer to be able to, you know, get you through all those processes. And that's the reason why you always have to make sure you're seeking legal, uh, you know, um, attention first before you even begin to do all the things that you have to do. That will be our conversation for this morning. But let's say a big thank you to lawyer Sena Otto for making time for us again here today on the show. We really appreciate this. I mean, you've been with us throughout this period. Like I said, um, this could have been a huge amount of money people are paying for this services, but you're doing this for us for free. And we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Hopefully on Thursday, most of the questions that you sent will be addressed. And maybe we'll look at, you know, how if the properties are distributed and the part, other partner is keeping it in their house, they're not bringing it, or the person is still living in the house, how do we go about things like this? And so we're going to be looking at it because it's not just because it's been shared and that's just it. But there's a way that we look at how we get all of these things, uh, you know, once they are done. So that will be our next conversation on Thursday. Make sure you tune in. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Lawyer has been, I guess, here on the show.